Yes, the Behringer MS101, the successor to the SH101, and a worthy successor. And Behringer makes the best vintage Roland products by far. DeepMind 12 was the uh, successor to the Juno series. And now we have a worthy successor to the SH101. Never could afford the blue one. Um, I got a gray one that didn't work, and I fixed it. And because of everything I had to do to it to get it working, I'll never sell it. Um, and so never could afford the blue one. It, it was always much, much more. Well, at least twice as much and probably more than that. Uh, twice as much as the gray one. And so I got the blue one, um, and it is not really the Roland blue, uh, and I really like it. It's kind of a, a metallic cobalt blue, I, I would describe it, but it's a, a gorgeous color of blue, and they're proud of the fact that it has the 3340 VCO chip in it. It's written right there, so they're proud of the fact that that is the same chip. And that's what gives this its unique sound, and that's why this does sound like the SH-101. The SH-101 has always been my favorite synth, so of course I'm going to love the MS-101. Now what you were hearing there was a sequence in Ableton being played in through USB into the MS-101, and then I came up with a little uh, string patch there, polynomial strings, to, to go with it. And the reason I did that is because this sequencer here is limited to 32 steps. And most sequences I like to make Aphex Twin sequences, Boards of Canada sequences such as Kiny Industries are going to be a lot more steps. And the original SH-101 had all of its steps available at one time. There's vastly more memory than the SH-101 ever had. Problem is that it's divided up into these banks and patterns. And so that's fine. It, it's, it works out great for coming up with new little repetitive patterns and things like that. But sometimes you want to enter those long patterns. And so I would ask Behringer to just make a mode where all of those memory locations are accessible at once like on the original. Okay despite my desire for a sequencer like the original uh, SH-101 sequencer this one is very good in its own right and you can make really good sequences up to 32 steps on it. So to show the workflow I can enter the first part of the polynomial C sequence and we'll mess around with it in the sequencer. So the first thing you want to do is determine the location where this pattern is going to be because we'll probably have some saved. So by hitting pattern 1, then shift pattern 1, we know we're in pattern 1, bank 1. So we'll make sure that pattern is clear by hitting shift, reset, and pattern. But let me show you. I already have something recorded in. So when I hit record, these are already lit up because I've already recorded something in pattern one. So to delete that out of there, I'll press shift reset pattern. Now we've got a blank pattern and we're on step one. And we just play it in. And we want to res uh, rest there. Turn record off and play it. So I'll just turn mod down for a second here so we get a consistent sound. Now while it's playing you can hit different notes. and transpose the sequence. Hit 
shift step and in step mode we can examine the data at each step of our pattern. Hit page and there are two pages of our pattern. That's page two. There's nothing on three and four because we only recorded 16 steps. But by hitting shift step we're in step mode where we can change the note, glide, ratchet, rest, accent of each step. So if we hit shift one, these eight LEDs here can indicate different things while we're in step mode. For instance, number five would indicate glide. So we could put glide on step one by turning this glide knob here and we see five light up. So now we have glide on step one. LED six would be a ratchet, which means playing the note several times in succession. So we can go to hit shift two, we're on the second step of our sequence, and we can add a ratchet to that by shift plus glide and the LED will indicate the number of times the note will play in quick succession. And let's add an accent and LED 7 will light up indicating that there's an accent on that step. And then 8, LED 8 would indicate a rest and one of these steps in here had a rest on it. Let's take a look at all of the steps together. We can see that step six, the light was off, also meaning rest, and then hit shift six. We can examine that step and see that LED eight is on, indicating that there is a rest on that step. And while we're in here, we could change the gate length of, say, step four by turning tempo gate length we can see the LEDs indicating the gate length of that step. So to hear the results of the changes that we just made in our sequence, let's uh, hit shift, set end, and then eight step. So now we have an eight step sequence and we should hear those changes that we made. We should hear the slide on one, the double ratchet on two, so that should play twice like two sixteenth notes. Note that I've turned glide on and set the glide to three over there on the left. We should hear, uh, I think we put the accent on three and there's a rest on six and so forth. So let's hear the results. <laughs> so you can hear one sliding, ratchet, Kind of a wow sound on three when the filter opens with that accent. Of course, the rest on six. Okay, now we got the pattern exactly like we want it, so we're going to press shift and play and hold down. And we see the green LED flashing slowly. And now we have to decide where we're going to put this pattern. So you hit 1 through 8. We'll put it in 1. Then to select the bank, we press Pattern and one of the... So that should go in 1-1. One, one. Now Shift and Record should save it. Let's go to Pattern 3. And back to one, it should not have disappeared. Now during live performance, we might want to mess around with the sequence. We can add ratchet to all the steps of the pattern by holding down shift and messing with glide. Play that slower. swing with shift plus tempo you 
and add accent to all the steps with shift and accent. And we can use transpose to change the octave. You can rotate the pattern and I can show it by I've made this I've changed this back to eight steps so you can see that five is a rest and so as I rotate the pattern you'll see that step move now the rest is moved to step one and you can mute any step by, if you're in keyboard mode, you can go shift step and mute various steps. <laughs> 